I remember we sat and listened to the songs and there was something in, incredibly sort of eerie about the first track, Jesus Alone. And we sort of had this line, you fell from the sky, crash landed. Do you want to just tell me the story? I mean, I, I don't really know because I, I can't imagine how you navigate such a thing. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I, I just can't even fathom it. Um, and, and watching this happen just to people that you, that you love is, um, it doesn't even, I don't think it even makes you any, gives you any insight really into, into it because you, there's a, a step with it you can't, you can't go. But it, it feels like f for Nick, as somebody who's created all his life, um, it, it feels like... Can we stop? Okay. We have to recalibrate, this is out of focus, it's not usable at the moment. Okay. okay. Calibrate focus, please. Sorry for that. That's alright, man. Uh, okay. Let's cut it. Alright, do you want me to hop out, John? Yes, and please, then, could yeah. you? Do you want me to yeah. get out too? Yeah, we'll get out. Get yeah. To stretch your legs. yeah. Mate, I'm sorry. It's shocking, man. It's huh? shocking. It's terrible. You well, just basically think this what is I want not to what I... What I want I, you to... I, to be I, honest, look, I, I, find, I find this very really hard because I've never discussed Nick's private life, um, yeah. or anybody that I know, I don't sort of discuss it like this, and yet it feels like this is something that's got to come up, you know. Yeah. Um, and so there's a part of me that feels very protective. Yeah. That's where it's hard to strike a balance, you know. Yeah. Like I can, I, you know, I don't want to go and tell you what I saw when I went there and all this. I don't want to tell you what I felt because it just feels like that's. That was that's like private, you know. Uh, I just Warren sent me something yesterday. Uh, I emailed a friend um, um, last yeah. night. Guys, right, should we all go in first? Because I've got to get in before. Uh, We've all got to get behind you, Benoit. Um, I don't know. And was mentioning how time felt elastic these days. Um, and he emailed me back uh, a very excited and lovely email where he spoke about um, the idea that all things were happening. Is this, um all the time. Is this okay to wear in the studio or do you want me to put a shirt on and stuff? Uh, Textually. Textually, that's not the greatest thing. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Okay, come on. Let's. Uh, are you going to film this? Yeah. yeah, we're filming. Oh, you're yeah. right. We, we never stop. Okay. So try and get both nicks. All past, present, and future are happening now, right now. And then if you just. Yeah, great, Nick. That basically a caveman was clubbing a, a female mate uh, at the same time that astronauts or scientists were trying to uh, work out how to colonize Mars. Now, that is encouraging, right? And I think he meant well, but it's not true because it's not true because If everything was happening now... Nick? Yeah? How do you feel about us having another go at that? I wouldn't be sitting here waiting for, for the film crew to work out how to work... Yeah, uh, we'd, we'd really appreciate another go. ...this ridiculous 3D black and white camera. Um, all right, this is... Okay. Right now, nothing is happening. We won't do it a third time. Okay, so what do you want to do? 
Basically, everything you just did was fantastic, okay? And we'd really appreciate another go. You know what I mean? Um, so I have to undress again. You undress, yeah. Now, let's go back to A. Do you want it to do a bit slower? No. Or no. I think you work so you want to work fast. Okay, you want me to do it. I can give you a bit more space there. I mean, obviously, your songs have become a lot less narrative. Uh, yeah, they have. Yeah. And do you have... Uh, is there a reason for that? Well, I, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I think... Um, maybe there, there's... You know, maybe songs serve a certain need, and, and I think I probably need it. Uh, on some level, a kind of narrative in my life that was um, kind of predictable and had its a, a, had a kind of logic to it. So I wrote stories, and they seemed to hold everything together um, in a particular part of my life or a long part of my life where things needed to be held together. Um, but I don't believe in the narrative anymore. I don't, um, I don't actually believe that that's what life is like and that, that there's a pleasing resolve and all of that sort of thing to life. I, I, I just feel that to do a fractured narrative, uh, a thing where, the, where time is actually compressed, um, events are stuck on top of other events. There's no particular logic to it. Um, or, or a distressing kind of logic um, makes that... Um, it's much more real and true to the way I feel about things. So um, this is just some sort of directorial t uh, tactic to make us all pissed off. To make you all pissed off? <laughs> Not at all. To get us all edgy in the morning. Put your bag in the yeah, there. thanks. No, not Thank at you. all. This is actually just, uh, this is us at top fishing. Thanks, <laughs> Nick. <clears throat> thanks. We're rolling, right? Yeah, that'd be good. So, um, everything we say is taped. It's all. Unless we pull out the plug. I think it's the nature of songs to um, have an insight into things that we don't consciously have because largely they come from the unconscious, yeah. which is a kind of reservoir of knowledge and understanding that's far beyond what we consciously are aware of. I've got this stuff that we did in Melbourne here when we were going through it. and. Maybe we can just go through this and look at the what. Yeah, that's changed a little bit. Yeah, but it, well, yeah. you know, we can let's just add, add, but, um, add to stuff or yeah, we'll subtract, okay. and then. But actually, with Jesus alone, should we go back to that? Um, you know, we talked about going back to the earlier version of it. Yeah. That's less okay. Good. So songs can often uh, appear to foretell situations in the same way as dreams maybe are able to um, have, a, uh, have a kind of prophetic nature sometimes. Yeah. Susie, for example, is hugely superstitious about my songs. Um, that they're a because, canary in the coal mine kind of thing, that there's some... Because, exactly, yeah. yeah. Um, but you know, I, I like I said, I don't I don't think that that this is uh, unique to to what I do. Although I write a certain type of song that has a certain element of uh, anxiety and dread and anguish yeah. to them in their nature, so it can uh, they can f foretell. Um, Uh, they can foretell 
certain events. Hey, Jake. This is the vocal that yeah. you didn't do at La Frette. Yeah, but I just patched up this yeah. vocal at La, La, La yeah. Frette. So um, this is this before it's been... Before it's been... Put in time. Yeah. The year fell from the sky and crash landed in a field near the River Aden. Flowers sprang from the ground Lambs burst from the wounds of their mother. In a hole beneath the bridge, you convalesced. You fashioned a mast of clay and twigs. You gave them names, you gave them names. With my voice, of that. I am calling you. And I'm playing the piano at the same yeah, time. Yeah, and, and because it just opens up a bit With more there. With my then. voice. Feels like I am cold. It doesn't need the piano, right? It's got the piano here. Yeah, but we could do the piano separately. Yeah, yeah. Added overdub piano and all those sorts of oohs and ahs and all that. You're an African doctor harvesting the tea. Just go back to This has a. I mean, I, can't, I have to listen to the other one, but this d definitely has a sort of intensity about it. That's yeah. There's something the way that it just sort of builds and it becomes yeah. hypnotic and stuff, and the other one feels like a song. Yeah. It feels... Okay, so the vocal needs to be fixed up because... Yeah, it goes in and out of... There's just mumbo-jumbo on it. You just re the vocal. Well, it's kind of ad-libbed. Right. You know, mate, it's... A bit, a bit a, you know, a lot. And then... In La Frette, we kind of put it on one. But the one was actually sometimes it wasn't even like we the never right even one. knew where the one no, was. No, it seemed to come in in the wrong spots. Well, at least we all back to it. It had a like different it was, opinion as we often do. It felt like it all. It, all, it, it felt happens. like it. You've never heard that one before. <laughs> one. Should there be a vocal before we do anything else? Uh, yeah. Or, I th or maybe I, we don't I, need I, a vocal. Before. I, I think I think the vocal will give us the kind of okay. the, the energy. Um, right. And what to do so that you, you feed off, you know, you, you, you're working off that, and then I think it's you know what to put under it. Like I think it's. Oh, that's it. Yeah. Um. Okay. Wow, that's really well. Incredible, isn't it? It's aluminium. Aluminium tin. Something incredible. <laughs> Three thousand dollars. <laughs> oh yeah, did you buy it? <laughs> you bought it. Yeah. Sound good? No, it looks awesome, man. <laughs> <laughs> this is difficult. This is really fucking difficult. It is. Doing an overdub vocal is some kind of torture. And it's something that I really try and avoid. Uh, I, I do everything I can to get the vocal down while the basic track is being recorded, you know, that we just all do it together. There's something more hypnotic about this one and kind of more meditative or something, and it kind of has a, um. feels a bit more mysterious or something. And and also the, the kind of fact that the stuff doesn't just come in on the one where you'd feel it, it comes in somewhere, but there's some more space for the kind of backing thing to kind of come through. And See? No. What's that one? I don't know what the chords are. I have to hear it on the piano. Yeah, you want to you, you, you play piano, right? And I don't know what the chords are. I don't know. I don't know yet because 
I don't even know what the cause is. They keep changing all the time. I mean, I played the chords originally. But there seems to be endless variations on the circle. Oh, fuck it, I don't know what that is. So no, I won't be playing the piano. <laughs> and it seems to be a bit weird to be trying to work out the chords to an improvised song anyway, don't you think? I'm calling you With my voice I am calling you I should have strengthened my voice With my voice With my voice With my voice I am calling Call, call I should have sung more before I came into the studio. I'm cold. I knew that at the time. Okay. All right. I'll come out, okay? Yeah. I think I'm losing my voice. Just file it under lost things. My voice. My iPhone. My judgment. My memory, maybe. Isn't it the invisible things? Lost things? That have so much mass? And so much weight? All right. And are as big as the universe? from the sky, crash landed in a field near the river Eden. Flowers spring from the ground, lambs burst from the wounds of their mothers. In a hole beneath a bridge, you convalesced, you fashioned masks of clay and twigs. You cried beneath the dripping trees, ghost song lodged in the throat of a mermaid. With my voice, I am called in you. You're a young man waking covered in blood that is not yours. Surrounded by a charm of hummingbirds. You're a young girl full of forbidden energy flickering in the gloom. You're a drug addict lying on your back in a Tijuana hotel. I am called 
with my voice I am calling you You're an African doctor harvesting tear ducts You believe in God, but you get no special dispensation for this belief now. You're an old man sitting by a fire, you're the mist rolling off the sea. You're a distant memory in the mind of your creator, don't you see? With my voice, I am calling you. With my voice, I am calling you. Let us sit together until the moment comes. With my voice, I am calling you. Let us sit together in the dark until the moment comes. With my voice, Cool. Nice. That was a good one, a long one. It's good. Great. Cup of tea. Do you feel that a lack of narrative allows you to get to something as, as a way to kind of explain I just don't the think, world? I, I don't think uh, life is a story, yeah. you know, that, that, ha that, that, that has it. I mean, we all hope it is. Yeah. Um, I mean, it all... kind of is, I have to say. It kind of is a story. It's the same story for everyone, in a way. In, in, in a way, but, but um, the arc can be very different. And it's not necessarily... Um, um, yeah. Well, may, yeah, I guess you, you were born and you die. Um, well, you gradually decay. 
gradually yeah. became. Yeah, which is, I mean, that's what I feel like I'm dealing with, and you're 10 years ahead of me. Um, you decay and you, you sort of diminish. Um, um, do, you re do you really feel that way? Yeah. In what sense? Um, that the struggle to, to do what I do is, um, it, it just requires more effort. Yeah. Was you ready? Yeah. All right, mate. Where, where from? Where do you want to, where do you want to go from, Was? Uh, I guess the second, uh, the second, no, verse. Most of us don't want to change. Really. That went away. That did. What happened when, when you when you came in? Because it went away and now it's come back. I mean, why should we? Has it moved back? Or is it, is it a cable? Ah, oh, was it when you lifted up the cables, John? Lift up the cables. What we want to do is to sort of modify. Modif modify. Yeah. Yeah. That's stop. What have we done there? Most of us don't want to change. Yeah, that's made, whatever, that's made whatever a difference. that cable is, that's the one. What we do want is sort of modifications on the original model. We keep on being ourselves, but just hopefully better versions of ourselves. But what happens when an event occurs that is so catastrophic that you just change? from one day to the next. You change from the known person to an unknown person. So that when you look at yourself in the mirror, you recognize the person uh, that you were, but the person inside the skin is a different person. So that when you go outside, The world is the same, but now you are a different person and you have to renegotiate your position in the world. Yeah. Okay. For instance, I think D, F, G, D, F, A seems to When you go into a shop to get cigarettes because this new version of yourself smokes, and the shop owner says, How are you? and you don't know how to answer. Or when you meet a friend on the street who says some kindness. Uh, the, they don't really work on the choruses because the, they connect yes, to they, the... Yes, ah, maybe, they, so maybe it should be, it's like I was born. And suddenly you are crying in their arms for ages. And then you realise that the person is not a friend at all. I think it's, we're saying the same or Like thing. a little boom, like the, the boom. They're doing the wah. They don't play on the one. Yeah. So on, on but the someone board, else that you don't actually really know very well. I wouldn't put any more emotion into it. Right. Or you go into a bakery to buy a loaf of bread, let's say. And you're standing in the queue and someone grabs you by the arm and says something with their kind eyes but you can't work out what they've said because the new you can't hear very well. And so you say, what? But too loudly and angrily. And he says, we are all with you, man. And you look around and all the bakery is looking at you with kind eyes. And you think that people are really nice. But when did you become an object of pity? As soon as I walked in here, I got this spike of agitation. Did you? How 
Has anyone seen my pen? Um, yeah. Um, did you print out the words that I sent or the it, words that you sent? Did I? Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. Um, no, because you don't have any. What if I've got them on my computer? Do you have a printer? Here I am, the moonlight man with my six shooter. I'm Steve McQueen. Call me a cab. I'm that kind of guy. I have a dream. <laughs> Sometimes I get the elevator to the top of the Burj Al Arab and shoot my guns across Dubai. Bang, bang, bang. I'm that kind of guy. I'm all right. Um, no, I know. But mostly I curl up inside my typewriter, curl up inside my typewriter and wish that I could die. Your legs are so long, they should come with their own elevator. Um, Don't worry, darling. I'll be coming around to see you later. I think I sang them differently or something like that than the time. Because between you and me and my best friend, the housefly. Yeah, kind of. I'm a Steve McQueen with a big, beautiful dream. I am God. I am God thinking about God thinking about Steve McQueen. Oh yeah, great. It's for me the sirens and the sylphs do their twilight pining. On Saturday night, I walk on someone else's stomach lining. Up and down the street, call me a cab, call me a cab. No, I'm a housefly called God, and I don't give a fuck. Right, that's it. it go on. Here I come up the elevator, 60 floors, hoping I don't get stuck. And everyone out here does mean, and everyone out here does pain. But someone's got to sing the stars, and someone's got to sing the rain. I'm the atomizer. I'm the vaporizer. I turn everything to crud. I like it here in your flesh and blood. I'm the elevator man, don't you see? You're a spider-lashed, long-legged, lovely young thing. Call me a cab. I'll drive to the top of the Burj Al Arab and fire my guns across your stomach. Because someone's got to sing the stars and someone's got to sing the rain and someone's got to sing the blood and someone's got to sing the pain. Watch out, you fuckers. I've got my six-shooter and my housefly on the lead. I'm Burj Al McQueen, and I'm coming to make every last one of you bleed. How are you, Jim? I'm all right, thank you. How are you? <laughs> got your beard back, mate. Yeah, yeah. I thought I'd grow it just for the shoot. What about continuity? Fuck continuity. Fuck continuity. God is great. Chances are, God is good. Well, I wouldn't go that far. C to B flat. I'm Steve McQueen, the atrocity man. If you wanna bleed, don't bleed. And sing too, Jim. If you wanna bleed, don't bleed. With my strap on, blood bond dream. If you wanna bleed. Don't be step away. But mostly I curl up inside my typewriter with my housefly and cry. I tell my housefly not to cry. My housefly tells me not to die. Because someone's got to sing the stars. And someone's got to sing the rain. And someone's got to sing the blood. And someone's got to sing the pain. Okay. Which one? Which one? Uh, <clears throat> Look at him. Holding everything together. Is my hair all right? Fucking never been better. Best it's ever been. Huh? Best, Best it's, it's ever been. been. I can proceed with absolute confidence. 
What would I do without Warren? If it's not... We, we should do one. We should do a take pretty soon. Or we're going to lose, we're going to lose the essence of the thing because I can feel the whole mojo slipping away. Yeah, it's getting cold. We're, we're getting bored, irritable. Can, can I hear, can I try that out just with the um, backing track, please, Jake? And he's got a... He's got a uh, he picked up to the camera and I was like, Tishi. You show him his camera? Yeah, yeah, I showed him a photo. It's spooky. Warren just pointed out how much the photographer looks like uh, Tishi. Tishi is another photographer. Hat on. Yeah, hat, hat work, yeah. Definitely. Who has, like, shaggy hair and a beard and... He's got bad back, so he can't be back, yeah. Lived most of his life in the streets of, the, of his hometown in in the Czech Republic, who took photographs of women with a camera that he'd made himself. They are really wonderful photographs, like stolen moments of women in all their many amazing facets. I mean, many amazing facets. Women have more facets than men. Men are, pre <laughs> uh, men are pretty much two-dimensional. And women are like fucking 3D. My wife is spectacularly three-dimensional. But every time I try to um, get a handle on her and to pull her into focus, she shifts and changes and becomes someone else. Or worse, she steps out of the frame entirely. And I'm left with a hovering ghost image that's burned on my retina. Like I've stared into a spotlight and closed my eyes. Eventually, she steps back into the frame. And I pull her back into focus but she's changed because she's been out there communing with the dead. Just bleed. 
If you wanna bleed, just bleed. But if you wanna leave, don't breathe a word. Just step away and let the world turn you, turn you. Neil lace up his boots, your little blue-eyed boy. Take him by the hand, go floating, moving down. I get lucky, I get lucky, cause I tried again. I knew the world, it would stop spinning now since you've been gone. I used to think that when you died, you kind of wandered the world in a slumber till you crumbled, were absorbed into the earth. Well, I don't think that anymore The phone, it rings no more The song, the song, it spins, it spins since 1984 The song, the song, the song, it spins, yeah, it's been spinning now And if you'll hold me, I will tell you that you know that if you want to leave, don't breathe. And if you want to leave, don't breathe. And if you want to leave, don't breathe a word. Just step away and let the world turn. and rings and you won't stay Touch me. Hair still all right? <laughs> even better. It's even better now. <laughs> Whatever you did, don't touch it. Don't touch, touch it. <laughs> Fuck, what happened to my face? Look at those bags under my eyes. Where did they come from? They weren't there last year. The director says I look like a battered monument. I have a terrible feeling he's trying to be kind to me. I must remember to be kind back. I must remember to be kind.
Mostly I never knew which way was up Once it was on, it was on, and that was that The umbilicus was a faucet that fountain rabbit blood And I spun on my wheel Like a laboratory rat I was an electrical stone on the bathroom floor Clutching the ball My blood was full of gags and other people's diseases A monstrous little memory had swallowed me whole It was the year I officially became the bride of Jesus In love, in love, I love you, love, I love you, love I'll move, you move and One more time with feeling I love you, love, I love you, love I'm sawn in half, and all the stars are splashed across the ceiling. Oh, the urge to kill somebody was basically overwhelming. I had such hard blues down there in the supermarket queues. A sudden urge to become someone, someone like you, who started out with less than anyone I ever knew. In love, in love, I love you, love, I love you, love, I'll move you, move, and one more time with fear. I love you, love, I love you, love I'm sawn in half And all the stars are splashed Across the ceiling of my blood then swim when in the bathroom mirror I see me vomit in the sink and all through the house we hear the hyenas hymns of love I love you love I love you, love, I'll move, you move, I'll move, and one more time with feeling. And I love you, love, I love you, love, we saw each other in heart, and all the stars are splashed and splattered across the ceiling. How disturbing is this? It's quite disturbing. It is? Yeah. <laughs> well, I think um, I'll, I'll make a deal with you. Right? Okay. A absolutely anything in the, that, that's in the film that you don't like, yeah. right, you can cut out. 
Okay. 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 You should just take one now. Wait, wait till it's um. I'll wait till. You know, we can take a photo of them. All right. And then we can put it in the film. We can like cut to it. Does that work? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, cool. Okay. And just wind it on with the. Okay. The winder thing. Awesome. Okay, and so if you want to um, take any photos today, you've just got to pop the flash, which is that. We didn't ask for it. But it is all around us, a gratuitous beauty that exists whether we are there to witness it or not. The world plunges on and all is magnificent. I watch you on your ice flow. Call something into the Arctic wind. The wind offers a brutal resistance. But still you plow on. I cling to my iceberg and sing to you. The animal rights people on around down there. Ways of freaking out. It's been um, an enormous amount of doing nothing and waiting around. Yeah. Sounds pretty difficult. You'll get used to the camera being there now, you're all. Okay, thanks. G'day, Sus. <laughs> <laughs> Gee, you're shy. That's what I do all the time, and they, they give me a special one that's not connected. <laughs> just for the, just for, the, for the cameras. It's called a DFA fader. It does fuck all. <laughs> <laughs> Are the buttons, can I press the buttons as well? Uh, and this guy is the videographer. We're watching the videographer who's watching the cameraman who's watching us. And it just goes around and around and around. Spooky, eh? So which is the 3D camera? Camception. The, the heavy that one. one. That one. Okay. It's this is the videographer. Is this in 2D? That's in 2D. Okay. He's, He's only in 2D. 2D. He's only in 2D. He's 2D, 2D guy. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, the last couple of records and the soundtrack stuff has been really about that. I just pile a bunch of stuff in there and then just try and find something in yes, there. Like, yeah. it's really about, th that's the really exciting thing um, yes, for the last few years with me has been about that, like trying to f find something that, that, that kind of just comes out of nowhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, These guys, Warren and um, Andrew, the director, they like to go on about accidents and the Accident, uh, ac the accidental nature of art. But this is just another way of saying they're communi communing with the gods. I mean, you'd think God would have something more pressing to do, really. There's no such thing as accident. Yeah, I think accidents is the wrong word because um, it's more uh, um, 
that we just get into a, that, that we get ourselves into a space these days where um, some sort of magical th thing happens that isn't to do with uh, uh, which isn't to do with knowing which isn't to do with knowing at all actually so um, I mean there are of course there are happy accidents and stuff like that but Mostly, um, I find that me and Warren, particularly when we kind of um, jam together and stuff like that, we get into a, uh, a situation where a lot of very beautiful things just happen after each other, and then we get into a situation where that doesn't happen at all. And we, we're, we're kind of um, forever um, foraging away for, the, for, for uh, these moments. It's a very different collaborative situation with me and Warren that is that, that it is with anybody else that, that has been working with me. Because we actually sit down in a room together and compose a song together. We're beginning out of set. I never knew what that meant. We grabbed the oxygen bar. to sing, let's say, if you're in a room together, to sing to something um, that you don't know, like you don't know where it's going. So I'm singing a melody um, that's been kind of stretched into all these, into a wholly different way than I can ever come up with myself. sit at the piano, I play chords and I know what, what to sing and I know what it's going to sound like before I press the keys down. And so you just, it, it becomes repetitious, there's no way around it, you know. But it's very exciting to have someone else doing that side of things because your melodies aren't dictated by what you, what you know.
you know, I'm, I'm um, to, a, to a fault, have had a thing about words, both uh, love and respect about words, but a kind of fear about words of where they can actually take you and um, what they can expose and stuff about you. Words, right? Yeah. That's, what, that's what makes the world go around. If we didn't have any way of articulating anything, we would have no way of even remembering anything, really. Um, so, um, because of that power of words, I've really kept them contained. Like, I don't let a line go, in my opinion. I mean, people might just think what I do is shit. I have to forget about that. But in my opinion, I don't let a line go that I'm not really, really pleased with, basically, right? Um, and this record, I have to let go of that because um, the line is successful for another reason. All the fine wind is gone. Looking for something to love There's a dark force that shifts at the edge of the tree It's all right, it's all right Well, you turn so long and lovely It's hard to believe That we're falling now down beside me and I'll name it for you Behold, behold the heaven-bound sea The wind casts its shadow and it moves through the tree And behold the animals and the birds in the sky and tide I hear been out looking for something to set on fire The head-bowed children fall to their knees Humbled in the age of the anthracene It's a long way back 
broken, I'm begging you please to come home now, come home now. Well, I heard you been out looking for something to love. Close your eyes, little world, embrace yourself. I don't want to just uh, write songs like a diary of what my life is like. I'm not really interested in that. Um, I want to write songs that radiate out and that, that connect with people and don't alienate people. Um, a kind of great trauma isn't actually uh, a very good thing. You know, you kind of... You say isn't. Well, sometimes you... You know, we all wish we have something to write about. You know, we all wish we have something in our lives that can happen, that we can... that we can... Uh, to, to, to write about and make our writing interesting and all of that sort of stuff. Um, but actually, trauma, I think, in the way that this happened and in the events that happened, um, it was extremely damaging to the creative process. Later someone entered the garden and bashed the snake's brains in with a rock. Basically every one stood around among the long black cars in a state of shock. Everything got sad, sad as a wind chime, sad as streamers, Sad as a single lost sock. There are many snakes, many trees, many gardens to unlock. The media and its complicitous reader blew the whole thing out of all proportion. A snake became a serpent, and in a typical tabloid distortion, the dead tree grew apples, the wasteland paradise, God was brought in, blame apportioned. The whole thing went tits up to the ceiling, a complete fuck up and a total abortion. It's like a rap song. The children let off handfuls of balloons into the sky. They huddled under the marquee. The wind chimes stopped. The streamers flagged. The straight sailing ships on the sea. There is a toll gate now in paradise. Absolutely nothing is for free. What's the worst that can happen? Turning, pushing the hair from your face and smiling at me. Do you do think it's a good idea to have Susie coming out of the toilet? Um, Just to, from a, an aesthetic and emotional and... How do you feel, Susie? Uh, Should we get out of your... No, no, it's fine. I don't mind. She seems okay, Nick. <laughs> right. Do you sure. really want to be photographed pinning your dress up in a toilet? It's fine. I don't mind. Just as I do. <laughs> okay. Well, well it probably... Oh. Let's move the camera out then. Well, can we avoid seeing the toilet? We, you, don't, you don't see the toilet. You're not going down into the bowl? <laughs> <laughs> What do you think when you look at the picture? Yeah, things have changed. Um, I like that because... Uh, because of the position of our bodies, that we're not uh, connected, that we're absorbed in our own... whatever. And, uh, but there's a, there is a real connection there too, yeah. as well, at the same time. Anyway, I love that picture. I actually went to a, uh, a Jungian psychiatrist. 
because I had some problems or whatever. But we ended up talking about Susie all the time because she's actually much more interesting than I am. And, uh, and he was obviously <laughs> more interested in her <laughs> as well. Um, and, um, and he said that it was, it was a kind of cre untapped creativity makes, is, is quite a common thing actually to, for, for um, that she's not doing what she's supposed to be doing. So, so it's a common thing for women uh, to move furniture around. I mean, what should we do? Yes. Where can this go? If we want that to put it back go... to the way it was the other day. Where was it the other day? It was over it was, there. The, the bike was there. Yeah, but do you want this out of the shot completely? Yeah, yeah. yeah I can just yeah. get that. That can go into Nick's office. You know, she knows I, I don't like it. So um, it tends to happen when, I, when I'm not in the house. And so I go away and then I come back in and it's different. You don't mind if I put this back under the... Yeah, that's fine. Dahlia? Yeah? I found this article of this guy up north who um, had a similar situation with his wife and he would nail everything, to all the chairs to the ground and everything like that. And she would tear them up and she'd be seeing... It was like that chronic. And eventually he divorced her in the end. But... Um, doesn't bid well for the future, really. Because it's really? cropped up in a couple of Nick's songs. <laughs> I'm oh, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. No, I really embarrassed. It, no, I always thought it was a, um, it was some brilliant, he'd come up with some brilliant kind of metaphor, you know, and yeah, then I no. realised that it wasn't a brilliant it was metaphor, actual it was an actual <laughs> description. <laughs> no, Su Susie changes, um, oh. it's better, but Susie actually changes the function of the room. While you're asleep, <laughs> right? So that you wake up, and the, yeah, it's it's a different. It's yeah, it's like the TV room when before it was the bedroom or something. No, I'm, I unplugged it myself, oh. darling. I, 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 Put women to be plugged in now. I think here. They should. Yeah, the boots and everything. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Can I just take it in and out? Oh, because there's, um, it's okay. Okay. Um, you see that? That's, that's Nick Kay. <laughs> now, should we just see, you can see what's going on there, Nick. You can see what you're being photographed by. Yeah. Yeah. You just thought that we'd leave the house and you'd be safe from us, right? Yeah, in my safe chair. <laughs> but we're still filming you in 3D. From another location. It's amazing. But seriously, what 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 do you think about what uh, about Susie's shoes? Well, let me see her feet. Can you see them? I think you should wear the high heels. Okay. I'll keep them on. All right. Okay. Now, Susie, do you want to just explain to us the philosophy of the dress? Yeah, um, okay, this dress is based on the American Prairie dress, and um, it's, um, you know, those sort of cults that all wear the same dresses. That was kind of the inspiration, because I wanted to do them in all these different colour pastels, and I wanted them to be kind of, instead of being really frumpy, that they're really see-through, like some of them are completely see-through, and some of them, like this one, is sort of semi-see-through, where I mean, you can decide how much you... Or to reveal. So is the idea to take something that is, is supposed to be deeply conservated and sexualise it? Yeah, I guess so. I guess so. There is that. And, <coughs> and it's not that see-through, so you don't have to worry. Since, um, you know, since everything that happened, my work became something different, you know. Before it was something I was doing, you know, because I, I was enjoying it and loving it, but then it became a real necessity. I really had to right. be, to work, and because um, it was the only thing that would take my mind off everything. Yeah. I try to not allow myself to sink down into, you know. I try to, you know, to just keep moving forward and keep yeah. looking forward, you know, and just. Um, but sometimes, you know, it, physically, sometimes I I feel it almost more in my. I don't know how to describe it. 
it's like a physical depression almost. Not 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 because I'm depressed, but just the grief process and yeah. you know and everything like that is very physical, but very you know my work is you know it's so diverting, and I'm so grateful right. for that. Nick tells me you know you're really different when you go you know he, Nick really encourages me to work and um, people have said to me well that's what creativity is where it comes from it comes from a lot of the time from pain and from some terrible situations and and um, and then I realized that that was what was happening to me you know in a small way I haven't got anything I can say any words of wisdom or anything about it because I'm yeah. not at that ever I don't know if I ever will be um. and do you want to just run us through Susie what, what it is um Um, well, when after Arthur died, I found this in storage, and uh, I just couldn't believe it when I saw it because it's a, a painting that he did when he was how old? About five or something like that. And it was um, it's of the windmill, and you know just where he died, uh, and Earl did one as well. There's two of them. Um, and then I, f I found this one and I, I, I just kind of couldn't believe it. Um, and I sort of hid it for a while. I, I didn't want to show Nick and I, I didn't know what to do with it. And I was upset that it's framed in black and why it's framed in black. I don't know why. Um, because it was framed a long time ago. And it kind of freaked me out as well. Because I thought, why, did, why is it framed in black? You know, maybe that's... You know, I was just being really superstitious, and um, anyway, yeah. But I'm, I don't really know what else to say about it, really. Yeah. There is more paradise in hell than we've been told. And every step we take, we start from blue, lie down and bleed into the water hole. And so the night it will in time unfold, curled up inside my palm and sleeping too. There is more paradise in hell than we've been told. From your lashes tumble stars of gold, star lashes, little splashes of dew, spill across the world and through my soul. Now call your tiny animals to the drinking hole. Little cat, little bear, little fire, horse, little kangaroo. There is more paradise in hell than we've been told. Little cat, little fire horse with her shivering foal, curled in my demon palm and dreaming too. And all across the world the night unfolds. And all across the night and through my soul. For every step we take, we start from blue. Fresh tears bleed into the water hole. There is more paradise in hell than we've been told. You need, you need the, the imagination needs room to move. It re needs room to invent um, and to dream. And when a trauma happens that's that big, there's no room. There's just no imaginative room around it. There's just the fucking trauma. Um, and I think that was, that was what the problem was when I tried to do new songs in the studio. Um, 
it's it's almost like the songs uh, the songs that we had written uh, in, in a way maybe they were songs you might have needed I don't know I don't know about the songs because the songs do seem to have a uh, the um, There's a, there's a sense of helplessness in the songs as yeah. well, you know? Well, you know, they're, they're, when we, t you know, we're, we're sort of talking about the sort of prophetic nature of them and all of that sort of stuff, I mean, we've got to take that with a pinch of salt. Yeah. You know, um, and on one level, I don't really care about their prophetic, they're not important enough in the, at this stage, but the way that they've been presented, the way that the way that you hear them on this record, um, is very much um, because of the emotional state. Just not, not just of myself, but everybody actually in the studio when we were doing that. It's it's um, the kind of state we were all in gave us, I think, the confidence just to allow this thing to go out like it was, this document to go out like it was. Um, which we wouldn't have done if, if events were different. You know, we would have fixed this up and we would have redone this. And um, there's yeah. something about the naked nature yeah. of the songs that that have um, Arthur, uh, all you know, yeah. all, all all through.
Yeah, things are being torn apart, and um, I'm desperately trying to find a way of um, making some kind of uh, narrative sense out of it, if we're talking about songwriting, or at least some sense out of it where um, over the... I can do what it keeps saying in the books, or people keep saying to me that it's... Uh, that I can re reduce this chaotic mess that's happened down into something that, that's more, um, you know, that, that I can reduce it, distill it down into a, like a platitude that I can fit nicely, you know, a, a kind of greeting card size platitude that means something to me, like he lives in my heart or something like that. You know, people say it all the time to me. You know, he lives in my heart, and I go, yeah, yeah, no, I know, yeah, right. But he doesn't, you know. He doesn't. I mean, he is in my heart, but he doesn't live at all. And and there is no... I, I, I want to be able to sit here and round this off in some kind of way, but to me, to me, it, it's just not... You know, it's just not... Um, Things, it's affected me in a way that I don't understand. So that my reactions to things aren't um, the same as they used to. And I used to be able to predict what would I would feel at, at certain times. And now, um, I just don't have any uh, handle on things anymore. Um, What's that like? Well, it's frightening because... Uh, like, I don't know what I'm fucking doing now, for example. What am I sitting in, in, a, in a camera being filmed talking about this sort of thing for? I wouldn't, I wouldn't, it wouldn't, I wouldn't have dreamed of doing that yeah. before. Well, I'm not sure that I feel entirely comfortable about well, it either. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know either. Let us go now My one true 
Set out. We can set out for the distant sky. Watch the sun. Watch it rising in your told us how gods would outlive us. They told us how dreams would outlive us. They told us how gods would outlive us. But they
I'm driving in a car along the M25. And I'm driving in a car along the M25 on a tiny blue speck trapped in a moonbeam. I'm looking out the window and up at the countless and indifferent stars. I am barely a child, really. The blue speck spins in a dark field that began 15 billion years ago. I'm driving home from the studio where I've been making a record. I'm feeling what every person who makes a record probably feels, that I am making something of great significance and permanence, even though in reality I know what I have committed myself to is of no real significance and no real permanence. But I have something that the universe has not, never has had, and will never have. Consciousness. My consciousness exists only at this given time. It has no past and no future. But its present is bigger in magnitude than all the trillion stars and planets and galaxies. There's no, um, if, if, you know, I, I can put it in different ways with, and make it sound nice and stuff like that, what happened, and, and, and use kind of to tie it up in language and stuff like that, but, but actually it, it, every time I try and articulate it, it just, uh, it just does the whole, does him a disservice. That's how it feels like to me. So... Um, you know, because it's it happened to us, but it happened to him. You know. Um, and that, um, like the day. Or the night, and uh, around that time is um, is like this place um, um, you just don't want to go. You know, it's like all the rest around is okay. I can deal with that. I can I can deal with that. It's okay. In fact, that's something I wanted to say. Is that if everything is not okay, but it's also okay. Right, if things go on, and you know, if if anyone's interested, the records go on, and we're still doing what we do, um, and the work goes on. Um, and in that respect, things uh, continue. Can we can we hear the uh, song, please, Jake, wherever you are? Whatever, whatever, we just want to see how it goes. Okay. Can you do one one way and one the other way? Here we go, guys. Uh, no, no, no.
across the sea. But the echo comes back empty. Nothing is for free. Anyway, th th that's what I mean. Uh, you know, all of the all of this stuff that I'm saying now, it just it feels like it's just a lot of bullshit to me. You know, it, it may it may mean something, but it, it, in the end, it, it in the end, there's some something that happened, um, and there's a kind of uh, a, like a ring around that event, um, or it's fenced off. Um, and everything else is okay around it, but there's just something that happened in that short space of time that we can never get away that far away from. That we're uh, you probably don't want to. Well, it's I think you know when I looked at the film back, there was something I was rattling on about time being elastic, yeah. and that is I think that's what I meant that that um, we're attached to this event and that we move away like that, and we're like on a rubber band. And, and life can go on and on and on and on, but eventually it just keeps coming back to that thing. And that's, uh, and that's some kind of trauma, I guess. It's strange reading those scraps back, those lyrics from my songbook back and you know they're they're okay they're actually kind of beautiful really but at the time they never revealed themselves as such and I just thought that I was writing a lot of rubbish that was one of the things I lost that was one of the things I lost hard a sense of uh, belief in myself like I'd fucked up bad that me and Susie had looked away for a terrible moment and this reflected savagely on everything else 
a belief in the good in things, in the world, in ourselves, evaporated. But you know, after a while, after a time, Susie and I decided to be happy. This happiness seemed to be an act of revenge, an act of defiance. to care about each other and everyone else and to be careful, to be careful with each other and the ones around us. Mm -hmm.